You're watching ESPN on ABC, home of the 2010 Rose Bowl game and the City BCS National Championship game. The Oklahoma-Nebraska rivalry has been a series of classics. High-scoring affairs with big names occupying the stage front and center. This time around, it could be the defense that dominates, though. The Sooners are led by All-American tackle Gerald McCoy and his mates, and they make life miserable for offensive lines every week. The Cornhuskers are guided by the best defensive lineman in the country, Indomitian Sue. This massive specimen can disrupt an offense if you're running or passing. And fellow Husker Jared Crick recorded five sacks last Saturday against Baylor. So get ready to strap on your headgear and bring along some aspirin to boot. It's the headache of the week in the Big 12, OU and Nebraska. Welcome to Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines. We are in Lincoln, Nebraska, where tonight the Oklahoma Sooners take on the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. And let's take a look at what happened today in the Big 12 Conference. Texas winning big. Texas A&M falls by one to Colorado when it come from behind. Oklahoma State big over Iowa State. K-State defeats KU. And Baylor surprises Missouri in Columbia. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin, welcome to Lincoln. You know, as far as series uh, that we have had that have gone on for years, this one may be as storied as any in college football. The reason for that, huge names as far as players, huge names as far as coaches. And the, the wonderful thing tonight is this one takes on a little different flavor. Like, I'm not sure we're looking at a high-scoring affair. We'll show you a couple of guys, Gerald McCoy and... In Domican Sioux for Nebraska, these two guys, not just two of the best, but as Ed Cunningham joins me here on the telecast, these fellows who both wear number 93, and these guys could be both in the top five of the NFL draft next year. And one of the things you look at when you're grading these guys is what are the players around them? Do their level come up? And you mentioned Jared Crick, who had five sacks last week against Baylor. He plays right next to Indomitian Sioux. He's Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. We asked Sue yesterday, what did you tell tell Jared coming into the season what you expected out of him. His mentality is he wants to help me and take the double teams and do all the dirty work. And I was like, let me do that. You go and make plays. And when you start making plays, they're going to have to start respecting you, the respect that you deserve. And <clears throat> then they'll, they'll even us up and have to play both of us true. Gerald McCoy, the number 93 for the Sooners. He's an outstanding player, and I called it Gerald and his mates. Those other three guys can be kind of nasty also, you know? It's amazing for Oklahoma. They only play five defensive linemen. Austin English, a great defensive end. Adrian Taylor playing well inside. And the guy who's jumped out all year long is Jeremy Beal. Beal had a stretch of two games where he had three sacks, five tackles for loss last week against Kansas State. So it's not just McCoy on that side of the line either. Well, I guess we can't overstate it. Big names, coaches, also players. Who will be the big names that will come away from it? this version in 2009? We're going to find out shortly. the inside of the tunnel as everyone jumps to touch the horseshoe. The Huskers about to take the field and hear another sellout crowd and get ready for what will sound like maybe the end of the world here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Here comes the roar and here come the Huskers. Nissan three-game shoot.
shift. We'll be back with the opening kickoff after this. And we are back in Lincoln as you look at the head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, Bob Stoops, 4-1 career against Nebraska. And across the way, the head coach of uh, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Bo Pelini, and who would have known 25 years ago, two young guys from Youngstown, Ohio, would wind up both head coaches and successful head coaches in Division I football, fronting off with each other at Oklahoma and at Nebraska. Yeah, the Pelini family and the Stoops families go way back with the high school together. Uh, great long history between these two football families. And we will we will talk a lot more about that as the evening goes on because it visiting with with both coaches and and hearing childhood stories and everything they, these guys uh, not only knew each other they played sports together but uh, the parents had great influences on the, the both sets of kids. Yeah, Ron Stoops was the defensive coordinator at the high school and uh, of course uh, his son Bob won the toss and elected to go on defense first against a freshman quarterback. So, so, are you surprised? <laughs> not one bit. So Bob Stoops said I want to get my number 93 on the field before you get your number 93 on the field. Marlin to kick it off. 2009 edition of OU in Nebraska is underway. And as you can see, we have a flag in the opening kickoff. Good news for Nebraska fans. During the return, holding number three. Ten yard penalty, first down. Not the penalty, obviously, but seeing Roy Hello Jr. in the huddle coming out, guys battled a shoulder injury. So the quarterback profile talk about Cody Green young man who was brought in when uh, the running game was struggling I mentioned Helu battling that shoulder injury Zach Lee more the passer Cody Green he's got a good arm but he is really in here because they can add a little run game to it second start tonight tough one. Helu gets the handoff and he will take it for maybe a gain of a couple. Ed let's talk about the impact players first of all for. Nebraska and Dontravius Robinson will get some time. The true freshman had to come in for Halu quite a bit the last few games. He will get some run. Niles Paul needs to have a big game. He's their deep threat. Struggled with, had a big fumble against Iowa State. And Alex Henry, an amazing kicker. He has made 24 straight kicks under 50 yards. And of course, that great 57 yarder last year against Colorado to win it. Yep, we were here. Quarterback will keep it. And that's Cody Green taking it forward for a couple of more. And Keenan Clayton will come over to make the tackle for the Sooners. Ed, let's talk about your game plan as far as Nebraska is concerned. I think they need to get the ball outside, some options, some toss sweeps, maybe some reverses, get away from that big defensive line. Options and QB runs, we've already seen that happen. We'll see more of that. And for Oklahoma defensively, the cornerbacks, very good. Jackson and Franks bluff and read this young quarterback. We, we've seen these guys catch it and go the other way. You can do that. Last week, of course, Green threw a pick six against Baylor. Third down and six, and there are flags and whistles. The snap, full start, number 68 of the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Keith Williams, the starting left guard, a junior out of the state of Missouri, is uh, the man who was flagged. And Coach Pelini, I'm sure, is taking notes right now just to say, guys, a rocky start is not what we're looking for. And this is what this offense has struggled with all year. Great defense, they struggled on offense. A bunch of guys injured. Of course, the changeover quarterback to a true freshman. Robinson checks into the ball game at tailback, number 27. The young man that Ed was just talking about, quarterback draw. Not going to go very far. And coming up is Adrian Taylor to make the initial contact. And it is going to be a three and out for the Huskers to open the ball game. And you see right away Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator for Nebraska, the type of game he is going to call. Cody Green has some work to do uh, in the passing game. It's going to be more of a run-based offense with him in there. Henry 
who had the 57 yard field goal also handles the punting and Ryan Broyles is the deep man for the Sooners dropping off to the 43. Wobbly kick taken by Broyles 42 yard line near side spins at the 50 and will go down in Nebraska territory at the 45. So let's take a look at Landry Jones and his profile. Of course now he is the man Sam Bradford had surgery on that shoulder out for the year most likely headed to the NFL had a wonderful game last week against Kansas State hit 14 of his last 14 passes and they needed every one of those to pull out the win. Oklahoma comes on the field and immediately goes over the football. This is Brown inside tripped up after a gain of about three and let's take a look at OU's impact players. Well Ryan Broyles we've already seen punt return he's going to move all around the field an electric player DeMarco Murray who missed Kansas came back against Kansas State with three touchdowns good in the run and pass game and Dominique Franks who had an interception returned for a touchdown last year against Nebraska helped make it 35 nothing Oklahoma in that first quarter. Second down. Brown nothing to left tackle bounces it outside and then it's going to be gang tackled at the 37 yard line. Ed let's talk about your game plan. Well we showed Ryan Broyles as one of the impact players get him the ball a bunch of different ways. We already saw the punt return maybe some reverses zone pass protection. I don't think you can man block in Dominican Sue and his mates and for Nebraska keep the call simple. We know Oklahoma likes to go fast. Don't get behind them. Third down and Ed, they only need a couple of yards to pick up the first they need to take it to the 35. He's going to throw on third down now he's going to run it. He'll have the first down very wisely Landry Jones slides down and it's Crick who was right there on top of him as he slid. He almost slid too early. <laughs> he got he knew where that line was but he was awfully close. You know, the yellow line that we have is normally right on. DeMarco Murray is at the bottom of your screen actually in the slot the number two guy and this is Brown in the backfield. Remember they like to use Murray as a receiver as they send him in motion and they give it to him on the sweep tries to turn it up nothing. That is fine defense by Matt O'Hanlon. It was interesting talking to Carl Pellini Bo's brother who's a defensive coordinator about O'Hanlon. He said he's a walk on so everyone assumes tough guy you know hard worker but he says you overlook the fact he's a very good athlete good vertical jump good 40 the NFL scouts are talking about this guy getting a shot at the next level. Rolls throws it a hit immediately. Wow. That is Dewan Miller who makes the catch. And then he caught O'Hanlon as soon as he caught the pass. So O'Hanlon with back to back stops and really good plays in the open field. And that was great read. A great read by O'Hanlon. There was only Miller in the route. So he came off his deep responsibility, came up and made a nice play. Murray, the lone setback. Third down. They need the 25. Jones ball batted at the line of scrimmage and then almost caught by Oklahoma and dropped. Pierre Allen was the man applying the pressure and this capacity crowd right now is really enjoying what they're seeing defensively. It's uncanny how many times Nebraska and of course the illegal hands to the face was missed there. Tipped by Allen. Yep. Pierre Allen got the hands up. He had his hand in the face of Brandon that was overlooked but this defensive line is so good at reading quarterbacks and getting their hands up. Tressway to attempt the field goal and they're waiting for one more person to come out on the field and they're going to have to burn a timeout. No score. OU when we come back trying for a field goal. Well 1971 you remember this play. It was number one Nebraska against number two Oklahoma. You remember the winner. Huskers won it 35 31 back to the field of play. 
This will be the first attempt at a field goal by Tressway. 46 yarder. Poised and ready. Gets a good pass and he missed it. He pushed it off to the right. Actually, being a left footer, he yanked it. Yeah. And, and of course, Tressway beat out Jimmy Stevens for the number one job. He missed a 54 yarder early in the year against BYU. But during that timeout, it was Corey Brandon who had had his helmet knocked off. He was late getting on. Oklahoma calls a timeout. Way stood out there uh, under the microscope the whole time. And it was almost like Oklahoma froze their own kicker. And you know what? They had to call the timeout. Otherwise, they delay would have game. that Absolutely. delay of game would have pushed it too far out. But it was because uh, Corey Brandon, as you said, had to get back out on the field <laughs> with his headgear on. Cody Green pitches the ball back as the flag comes down. And Halo hurdles a man. He did not pick up the first down, but Keenan Clayton, he just climbed him like a ladder. Where it was thrown, you suspect it will be holding. Personal foul. Mm. Shot block. Number 78 and 64 of the offense. 15 yard penalty. First down. Well, that's right tackle Marcel Jones. I believe they mean 74 right guard. Yeah, Ricky, Ricky Henry. Henry. And it, the easiest way to explain is when a player is engaged, the second player cannot come in and hit him low. If he does, it is a chop block. Well, it was 74 and actually 68 Keith Williams as they went up to that second level. The right call, the wrong number, but Nebraska just can't get out of their own way offensively. Green to throw, rolls the pocket, the ball is tipped, and it goes incomplete. So already what we are seeing is two defensive units that they may bend a little bit, but it is uh, not real often that they break. We've seen tip passes by both teams now already and some really hard hits by the defense. And Oklahoma last week uh, had their struggles against Kansas State, gave up a couple of big third down conversions late in the game uh, in that second half against Kansas State. And it was the offense that actually had to come through for the first time this season for Oklahoma and clean it up. Second and 24. Green tries to turn the corner, is tripped up, and it's going to be third down and very long as Ryan Reynolds is a man who got a hand on him. Well, top AFC contenders fight for conference supremacy on ESPN's Monday Night Football at 8.30 Eastern. It's going to be the Steelers taking on Denver. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 7 Eastern. It was interesting, Sean Watson, the offense coordinator from Nebraska, looking at these two defenses, said this is going to feel like an NFL game. It's not going to be 52 to 50. It's probably going to be 21 17 something like that because of these two defenses. So a timeout has been called. We'll take it with him. No score. Nebraska and OU. Saturday night football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines. Go to Southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. Bud Light, with the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light. The difference is drinkability. And AT&T, your world delivered. Last night, there was a dinner here in Lincoln honoring the major award winners from both schools, including Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch and legendary coaches Tom Osborne and Barry Switzer. Started last year in Norman, and so this year they have uh, held one here in Lincoln and it looks as though it's going to become an annual thing as Halu gets that shovel pass and just absolutely no place to go Adrian Taylor with his second tackle of the night uh, you feel for Nebraska I know their fans are very impatient about this offense they now have one yard of total offense after two possessions and been hurting themselves but all the injuries all the inexperience they're searching for anything they can find. Henry rates five yards deep in the end zone. OU's coming after him. He gets the kick away. 
Another wobbly spiral taken at the 46 by Broyles. And Broyles changes direction. 45-40. Inside the 35, and he's down to the 30-yard line. And Broyles proves again his real importance to this football team. Matt Wider in New York. Let's check in with you. All right, Ron, a very disturbing moment tonight in Berkeley, California. Cal's electrifying running back Javid Best hurdles a pair of Oregon State defenders and comes down hard in the shoulder neck area. He remained on the field. The game was delayed for 16 minutes. His Bears trail Oregon State 14 7. Wow. We certainly look forward to getting a report on Javid. We've had the pleasure of doing him several times and he is such an outstanding player an outstanding young man for that matter. We hope that everything is OK. That pass Aaron and I'm not so sure that it wasn't tipped as well. Yeah. So what is that three or four tip passes yeah, that we've three. had already. Yeah, and I believe that was again uh, Pierre yeah. Allen working over that right tackle spot which has been a sore spot for Oklahoma. Corey Brandon in there right now. Landry Jones hands it off to Brown. Sweep. Maybe a couple. That's it. It'll be third down and long. Oklahoma. O'Hanlon and Jared Crick combining on the stop. And Carl Polini was not joking yesterday when he talked about the speed and explosive ability of O'Hanlon. This young man, he comes up out of that secondary, but he's under control. He's fast and under control. Great combination at safety. Line to make is the 20. Pressure. Middle screen, the ball almost intercepted Barry Turner. Wow. And the pressure was coming off the left side, and I believe it was Crick who was coming after the quarterback in a hurry. Well, this is just bad technique by the right guard, Stephen Good. He's just going to completely let Crick go. And even though it's a screen, you just can't give the guy a free run at the quarterback. And here comes Tressway again to try another long field goal. Another good stop by Nebraska after good field position for Oklahoma. It's going to be a 45-yard attempt, this time from the left hash mark. Blocked. Nebraska. Huskers will take it over. No score. The defenses so far are beginning to rain. You know that Tressway has to kick it right through this area here because he's on the left hash. So who do you line up there? Well, probably a pretty good idea to put 93 Sue. Great timing. He, he's just got such a feel for the game. Remember that interception he had against Missouri where he just he, he wasn't dropped in coverage. He just he just has a, such a nice feel for the game. He's such an intellectual about the sport. So a blocked field goal for Sue in this ball game, and the running play will go for absolutely nothing. Quentin Carter, number 20, the junior out of Las Vegas, just knocks uh, Hello down immediately. This Oklahoma defense playing at such a high level. The secondary, which wasn't great last year, has really improved in Quentin Carter. A big reason for that. He had the interception to seal the win against Kansas State last week. Of course, he had the interception against Kansas on the first play and that guy right there Brian Jackson having a sensational last season in Norman. Second down about 11 and there's movement at the line of scrimmage and here and come the booze. Boy I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Bo Pelini is. Final snap. Full start. Number 78 of the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. So it's two jumps by the offensive line. A chop block mm -hmm. and in fact at one time they had five snaps and there were three penalties. Uh, not trying to pile on but I'm saying what this guy right here is thinking and what he's saying is that we really don't need to help Oklahoma. <laughs> they, no they're they, doing fine. They're 34 yards in penalties already against the Huskers. Green steps up and throws far sideline. 
overthrown and way out of bounds. Niles Paul, the intended receiver, and he was the man that we were told uh, yesterday by Sean Watson. He said, you know, we've got to get the ball to him more and more because, and he needs consistency as far as catching the ball. And it's so hard because Gerald McCoy, they're trying to cut block him. They get him down. Does a good job here spinning out, but watch the adjustment by McCoy. He knows the cut block is coming, and that time he puts his hand down, and that pass rush before, Green had to get rid of it so fast because all of these guys were right in his face. Quick pass. Has that one complete, and that's Kenny, and Kenny will take it out close to the 30-yard line, and now the crowd really getting a little restless. That is three, three and outs for the Husker offense. Well, there's so much inexperience around that true freshman, and uh, also this offensive line has not been playing well. Every starter on this offensive line for Nebraska has had an injury, so they've been in and out of the lineup. They just have no consistency right now. Because of Broyles and his returns, Oklahoma, on both of their possessions after punch, have taken the ball across midfield. This is a better coverage kick, very high, and he is collided with, and the flag goes down. That was Gomes who got downfield, one of the gunners, and he collided with Broyles before he had the ability to catch the football. First guy there to tell him to shake it off is Dominic and Sue, knowing that they'll need Gomes to get that out of his memory and play well in this series. Kick catch interference on the kicking team. 15 yard penalty. It is first down. So we have 506 left to play first quarter, and that's 49 yards and penalties against Nebraska. And for Nebraska, well, they didn't quite give up uh, over midfield on this well, that's right. possession. <laughs> 49 so and a half. The, You're right. I guess that's the good news. DeMarco Murray hit at the line of scrimmage, and that is Indomitian Sue. They're not <laughs> booing, but they're saying Sue. He is so powerful and plays with such great balance. Watch how he uses his hands, and he's just, he's impossible to block. Amukamara got outside to make the play on that one. We go and back to the play before, Ron. Sorry about that, but he's no, just, no, no. It's your fault. He's so good with his hands. Look how he just sheds. Good. When he gets his hands inside of you, he's just inside of yours. He's just too powerful to block. Third down. They need to take it to the Nebraska 40-yard line. Blitz coming off the left corner, right at the middle, taken down. And that is a linebacker blitz, and it's Dillard. Philip Dillard, a senior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Dillard, one of the great stories of this season for Nebraska, did not even play the first two ball games of the season, was struggling at that middle linebacker spot. Before Virginia Tech, they moved him to Will linebacker. He played lights out, and he's been playing great ever since. Carl Pellini says, the biggest success of my coaching career is Dillard. Niles Paul, the deep man. It's a high pass from center and a great job of getting the kick away. Paul calls for the fair catch and falls down, but he makes it at the 23. Well, Dallas fans, there's a new place to go get the latest on the teams that you care about most. ESPNDallas.com. Now, if it's Big 12 football, the Stars, the Mavericks, and, of course, your Cowboys, ESPNDallas.com is your home for sports news, radio, highlights, and updates at the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. This game exactly as advertised. Unbelievable the field position Oklahoma's gotten. And zero points. I, I thought that, you know, Nebraska would uh, gain a little space because of the blitz and the deep tackle. But Tressway with a nice punt option back into the boundary. Just not much there. And it's Frank Alexander who makes the tackle for OU this time. 
Well, Brett Venables, you know, we we're talking about the top of the show. They only play five defensive linemen. McCoy and uh, Taylor go every snap in the middle. And Frank Alexander is the third defensive end that comes in and spells English or Beal. And he said, if, if I had, if, if those guys didn't play at that high level the entire game, I would rotate them. But they play so well throughout the game, there's just no reason to rotate guys. Nebraska, second down. They run it to the left. Tackle is broken by Halo, and he's out to the 31. Sam Proctor on the stop. And folks, you know, you got to walk before you run. But the point is, in this third down, should Nebraska pick up a first down, it would be their first of the ball game, and this is their fourth series. It's so important to have Halu back. He helped hurt his shoulder against Missouri. The important thing is, and I couldn't agree more, but they got to stop putting the defense back out on the yes. field free and out. They'll get tired eventually. Yeah. As good as they are, they will get tired. Running play, and he is not going to have it. It's going to be fourth down Nebraska. Ryan Reynolds came up to hit Hellu, and that is four, three and outs by the Huskers in the early going. And I don't, I don't know how much you want to keep testing the middle of that defense. You got a nice one on second down with uh, quarterback Green being a pretty good athlete. Maybe start moving him out a little bit in space, give him a run pass option. Fourth punt of the night, Nebraska. Best kick of the night. Wow. This one may go to the fairgrounds. And now it takes a Nebraska bounce and is going to go out of bounds and go dead at the two-yard line. Listen to this crowd. talk about these crazy college football seasons and some days it just here are the big upsets of top 25 teams Northwestern over Iowa Iowa loses their starting quarterback and the game Stanford wallops Oregon Navy defeats Notre Dame and Ohio State who would have thought it that was at Penn State and they really kicked the Nittany Lions this is the first time that Oklahoma will have snapped the ball in their own territory. That's movement at the line mm -hmm. of scrimmage. It looked as though Jarvis Jones came out of his stance just a tad early. Yeah, but it's only going to be a one-yard penalty. Right in the snap, full start, number 76 of the offense. Half the distance, first down. I mean, as crazy as it sounds, it's not that bad of a penalty. No. <laughs> you know? But you know what? Bob Jones also knows, or Bob Stoops, I should say, he saw what he played at Iowa, and he knows what's happened in that ball game today when Iowa gave up, lost their quarterback, yeah, and gave man. up a touchdown because they were scrimmaging deep in their own territory. Right up the middle, Brown finds an opening, and that's a gain of five. Asanta makes the tackle. And Brown is the guy as uh, Oklahoma's coming up fast that will mostly do this inside run stuff for Oklahoma. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Brown bounces it outside. And now a late flag as the whistle started to blow after the play had already commenced. Right the snap. Full start. Number 71 in the offense. Half the distance. Second down. Well, Trent Williams, the left tackle. Really the only returning starter from last year has has not had a great senior year. He's playing a little bit better now, but has struggled with technique and focus a little bit and just jumped a little early there. Second down. OU snaps the ball from the three and a half yard line. Landry Jones throws the ball high. It's going to be third. Dewan Miller, the intended receiver. And Oklahoma right now, I, I don't think a drop back pass is what you want to call. Dillard ran free on the last time they had the ball on the blitz. A draw, a screen. I don't think you want your quarterback holding this ball in the end zone. Jones is now one of six for five yards. Pressure. Sue. Ball tipped by Sue and almost intercepted. 
So he has blocked a field goal, and he just knocked down a pass that one of his teammates almost made a pick off. Uh, it's amazing. And Dominican Sue, not only does he share the lead for tackles with his team, but look at the read and the vertical jump. This guy is such a wonderful athlete, but he just sees everything so well. He leads the team in pass breakups as well because of that ability. <laughs> Unreal. Folks, he's 6'4 and weighs 300, and, and you could see the agility. And where did it come from? He started off playing soccer. This is a nice punt right here. Paul being pushed all the way back to the 35 yard line. Flag. Tackle is broken. And the ball would have been at the 43 yard line. But it looks as though it's going to come back. Bo Pelini's head might explode once he hears this penalty. It's just Nebraska is just killing themselves. I think what what Bo is questioning here that flag was thrown from almost a mile away from from where the suggested penalty occurred. There is no foul on the play. Well, they had a good argument. And uh, and his head didn't explode. And <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to. But so, give a lot of credit to Alex Henry, the punter. Remember, the 66-yarder drops him down to the two, and now Bob Stoops is about to get a little upset about not getting the penalty. And Dominican Sue being attended to on the sideline. We'll try to find out more about that. First time that Nebraska has scrimmaged from Oklahoma Territory as the keeper will be down in the vicinity of the 41 yard line. Gerald McCoy making the tackle. You know Sean Watson yesterday the offensive coordinator who's now down on the field calling plays. He's always been up in the booth but last week against Baylor with a freshman quarterback said I'm coming down on the sidelines. He said we've had to totally reinvent ourselves offensively. We lost Quentin Castile the running back who was removed from the team in August. Lost Burkhead, the freshman running back. Malou was hurt. Just this time, Green takes the snap from under center. First time that we've seen him do that tonight. Alexander with his second tackle. But it's just been one injury after another for Nebraska. They had to demote a couple of wide receivers. Kerensky, Gill Gillian, uh, Menelik Holt, guys who just weren't they were having problems dropping the ball and fumbles and things like that. They've just gone through so many uh, different personnel sets that just not comfortable with them. Well, the clock shows double zeros. That is the end of the opening quarter. And as we head the period number two, no score. Okay, the ladies of uh, Nebraska, Pom Pom Squad, and we thank them. Lincoln, Nebraska, we have a third down for the Huskers, and they have the ball at the 42 yard line of OU. Blitz coming from deep in the secondary. Pass over the middle, nobody home. Well, and <laughs> we talked about off the top of the telecast that we thought the defenses might dominate. I'll tell you what, when we show everybody the stats on this game, you're going to say, you got to be kidding. Yeah, it's been amazing. Of course, Nebraska has their issues. You just saw there. Green is just not, he's not settled in. He's a true freshman. I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe we see a little bit of Zach Lee come back in, the better passer right now. But Green's in there because he gives them a little bit of running game at quarterback. But I think we may have to see Lee before this is over. This is the fifth punt of the ball game. Then he kicks it for the sideline, bounds and picked up. That was a great kick. Touch dead at the eight yard line by Lester Ward. Now let's take a look at those stats. Unreal. When we start the game, we always show a this uh, this graphic with these zeros in it and have a little laugh and say well let's hope it's better than that well <laughs> not it's a not a whole lot better than that <laughs> 22 total yards 
in a quarter of play. Well, we had what? One first down between the two teams. Yeah, a little different Big 12 this year than it was last year, isn't it? Shovel pass. That's Brown. That is a great defensive play by Philip Dillard. So Dillard now with a couple of plays that are very big in the ball game. He got a sack on a blitz, and that open field stop right there was right on. I think one of the things that uh, Carl Pellini and his defensive staff do just an amazing job is the vision of their defenders. They just see everything so well. Second and ten. Pass. Drop thrown a little bit behind DeMarco Murray. Matt, what do you have for us? Let's check to New York. All right, Ron, I've got a Taco Bell update from Clemson, South Carolina. ACC ball tonight. Florida State leading the Tigers. You get back into it. Kyle Parker to Xavier Dive. 43 yards on the touchdown. The two-pointer was good. And Florida handling business so far at home. Number one, 13-0 on Vanderbilt. Okay, Matt, our situation, no score. Oklahoma scrimmages from their own eight-yard line. Jones drills the ball. Oh, it is intercepted. Anu Kamari. And he is still on his feet at the 10, inside the five, and down to the run. So again, it is a defense, and a young man from Glendale, Arizona, Prince Amukamara. And Amukamara, a former wide receiver, top of your screen, does a wonderful job of reading Tanell's route. Able to put your hands on beyond five yards in college football. He did that, redirected Tanell, and then he saw the move that he was making cut right in front of it. Timing and it, was and if perfect. He, if he hadn't run into Dillard, his home teammate, he might have scored. Dillard made a heck of a tackle, didn't he? <laughs> Watch this. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> he bangs it. First and goal. The ball at the one-yard line. Robinson. Legate is the fullback. Robinson left side, nothing. Flag goes down. I'm not so sure. This may be defense unless they were drawn upside. Adrian Taylor made the tackle. That's going to be the call. Offsides on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. And Zach Lee has come in at quarterback and not surprised by this. Cody Green looked like he looked like a true freshman on that last drive. So not surprised at all that the junior more experienced comes in on the goal line. So he's got a second down and goal from the one yard line. Zach a junior out of San Francisco play action. Throws in the end zone. Touchdown Huskers. Just talked about how well Zach Lee took the demotion to the freshman. Stayed focused, continued to work hard. Good play action pass, and Ryan Hill comes wide open in the corner. Henry knocks home the extra point, and as we go to break, another look at this touchdown pass. Zach Lee to Ryan Hill. He's a sophomore out of Arveda, Colorado. Wild Wings presents the top 30 plays of the last 30 years. 14. In the 1995 National Championship game, quarterback Tommy Frazier was determined to run all over the Florida Gators and lock up Nebraska's second straight title. Oh, they don't have him yet. Look at Tommy Frazier. How many tackles can one man break? Touchdown. Follow the top 30 countdown all season long. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. 
You know, and to me, the amazing thing about Tommy Frazier, he not only was MVP uh, in, in 94 and 95 of the Orange Bowl, in 96, they went to the Fiesta Bowl, and he was the MVP of that one. Now, that is almost impossible to do. That, that run for Nebraska in the mid-'90s, all the way up to 97, that, that must may have been the most dominant run in the history of college football. Those teams were amazing. This is three yards deep and instructed to not bring it out. Matt Weiner, let's check with you. All right, Ron, let's get Verizon Wireless update. Number five, Cincinnati is poised to move into Iowa's spot if they can beat UConn tonight. This is Zach Galeras been doing it with the arm. He does it with the feet there. The Bearcats are on top by 10, 17-7. Okay, Matt, our situation, seven to nothing, and it was a defense that broke the game open. An interception by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They have seven on the board as the return went to the one yard line. OU from the 20. DeMarco Murray. He is belted behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a loss of four. Dennard. Alfonso Dennard, a sophomore from Rochelle, Georgia. Well, Ron Franklin, Ed Cunningham coming to you from Lincoln, Nebraska, Oklahoma. All with two on field goal attempts. And you can see the interception on the part of Nebraska. Jones pass a little too far. And here comes a flag yeah. from way downfield. Well, Hanlon got there just a touch early on Dewan Miller. Miller gets up a little slowly. Leading receiver last week against Kansas State with nine catches, a career high. Pass interference, number 33 of the defense. 15 yard penalty. It is first down. Uh, he just got there a touch early. But for Oklahoma, getting a little something going, even with the penalty, Dewan Miller. Because Brandon Kaleeb has the uh, bum ankle and now moves up to number two. The difficult thing is they had dropped OU for a four yard loss. They were making them play behind the chains, and this ball in and out of the hands of Tanell. And Tanell is down. Asante is the man who came over and made the hit. Ball thrown just a touch late by Landry Jones. Allowed Asante to come over, and Tanell did not catch it clean. And that's a clean hit. He, he did not lead with his head. He did not target the defensive player if the shoulders are above. His head is up, his shoulder into his midsection. Literally so a completely, cross yeah. body block. Completely so let's take a hit. timeout. Seven to nothing. It is the Huskers on top. Southwest Airlines. Go to Southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. The only 2010 SRX. The Cadillac of crossovers. And Aflac. We've got you under our way. The Lincoln Children's Museum was created by a group of active, committed parents and educators who had visions of Nebraska children learning through exploration and discovery. And it also was constructed as the first green building in the city of Lincoln. Young and old alike enjoy it, as you can see here. Tanel is still down. And I just want to show something that happened after the play. Now, we're not there and we can't hear. But... After the play, and this is an outstanding defensive play. No two There's ways about it. No right. two ways about it. But Asante stands over the player, jumping up and down. And my first reaction is, you know, I'm still I'm asking the question: Is that taunting? I, I always think when you're done with a play, obviously it happened so fast. There's no way Asante could know that Tanell was injured and uh, was going to have a hard time getting up after the play it looks like he may be getting up now but still turn and celebrate with your teammates don't do it over a player and I know 
Uh, classy move by Asante now. Yeah. Clapping that he is up and moving. But Bob uh, Stokes know, maybe, was upset. Maybe he was he just maybe he was just excited. But it, it certainly left the appearance of you know being just that. And now Asante is on the field with his helmet off Good and him. applauding. Good and that's yeah, you're right. Good for him. Yep. He's showing, you know, sportsmanship there. So maybe that was not the intent. I certainly hope not. And don't take away that it was a nice play. Didn't lead with his head. Yeah. Did not target uh, Tanell from the shoulders up. Just a nice clean hit to the midsection. Second down and ten, Oklahoma. Huskers lead it seven to nothing. Twelve fifty one left until halftime. Pressure throws it away. And that is Indonican Sue. And watch the slide protection. Everyone sliding to their left, and it's gonna leave Stephen Good one on one. And it just you just can't do it. You've got to give help on Sue. Whatever you have to do, you have to slide towards him. There has to be a call that says. 93 is right. Let's slide the other way, <laughs> not away from good. You've got to give that young man help. This man's too good. DeMarco Murray is the lone setback. Pass caught at the 41 yard line by Broyles, and that's enough for the Oklahoma first down. Well, Broyles is playing at a super high level, leads the country with 10 touchdowns receiving. And of course he missed the better part of the Miami game and all of the Baylor game with that shoulder blade injury. So imagine if he had played those two games the numbers he had. First catch by Broyles tonight. He's had a couple of impactful returns on punts. In the flat. Too tall for Murray. Time for our Aflac trivia question. The name Indomitian is Nigerian in descent. What is the translation of the name? That's the Aflac trivia question of the night. We'll come back with the answer shortly. I'm pretty sure it's not soft as a pillow. <laughs> well, I'll tell I don't you think what. that's what he that is. Some is. kind of football player now. Nebraska shows blitz and they come off the corner look in that is a nice job and the quick uh, cross the slant by Broyles makes the catch and it's not quite enough for the first down as Asante is there to make the stop Broyles is so quick lined up in the slot Asante giving him plenty of space Murray left side first down Oklahoma at about four or five more flag comes down and that is going to be a late block I believe against the Sooners and it might be Trent Williams. Yeah he was working against Barry Turner and they were way down about five or six yards in front of the ball. Almost out of bounds. Personal foul late hit number 71 in the offense. 15 yard penalty first down. Started to say they had achieved first down and it was a post play foul. So the, the penalty moves it back to the 43 yard line. And Trent Williams, a guy that Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator, has been pushing and pushing and pushing to play up to his ability. He's got next level ability, but uh, he has had some real struggles this year. And they finally get something going on offense. I think they're going to talk about is this first and 10 or first and 25? Because if it was a. Uh -uh. that <laughs> but it is a post play foul and I am 99 percent sure that you've achieved the first down the 15 yards has stepped off then you have first and ten. Well this time it is Jared Crick 
rather than Indomitian Sue, and it's Jared who plays the other tackle. And the amazing thing about these two guys is how many tackles they make that are either on the other side of the field or beyond where the hashes are. They're simply hustle plays. Well, and he's so tall, 6'6". He's really starting to use those long arms to his advantage. Swing pass to Murray. This one's perfect. 45 at the 50. And I think he's going to have the first down. Asante will make the tackle, but he tried to go right over the top of it. This is one of the things that Murray, Coach Wilson, has started using him more, and he has really been effective because he's so good in space. He's such a dynamic guy. He ran for over 100 yards against Baylor. He had 116 yards catching against Texas. He can do so many things. Jones, ball caught at the 30-yard line, and the tackle made immediately. That is Cameron Kenny. Tough throw, and I mean the defender was very close to knocking it down. It's a gain of 17, and Oklahoma hustling back to the line of scrimmage. Jones turns and hands it off, and it's Murray again, this time to the left, and he will drive his way inside the 25. Crick and O'Hanlon combining on the stop for Nebraska. And right now, and Sue is getting a breather, so I think Oklahoma should continue to try to run the ball a little bit with Sue out, catching his breath. I think this is the time where you try to make a little bit with your run game. You know who's in, though, and that's Baker Steinkuhler. His dad was an All-American here, and this kid is very quick and a very good young prospect as a freshman. That's the 12th play of the drive as the pass was missed. Well, you missed a chance because here comes Sue. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Stein Cooter out of the ball game. His father, Dean, was an offensive lineman here and an All-American and played for several years with the Houston Oilers. This youngster, they wanted him to play offense. He said, no, I want to play defense, and he's making his own way there. 13th play of the drive. Third and six. Here comes pressure. Jones gets it away and it is caught at the 20 yard line. Mensick made the reception. Junior out of Rosenberg, Texas. And uh, Oklahoma's going to go fast here. Great play by Landry Jones, but they bring the fullback in. Matt Clapp, what an excellent job by Jones. Little confusion for Oklahoma. I think this is the right call to go for it. I, I don't think you want to run straight at Nebraska right now, though. I think a toss sweep to the right to Brown is your play. Timeout. Nebraska, their second of the half. Let's take a break. Seven to nothing. Huskers on top. The funniest thing is that I grew up liking the game and, and just admiring it. But I mean, once I found out I could play it and, and had an opportunity to play it, the best thing I loved about it is I can go out and hit somebody as hard as I can and not get in trouble for it. And Dominican Sue, and right now he needs to raise it up again another level. It is fourth down and less than a yard for the Sooners. Murray. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be Nebraska taking the ball over. And it is Haig who makes the play. So tonight, on the first five drives, Oklahoma had 13 yards. On this drive, they had 60 and two that play. They lose a couple. So 58 yards on the drive, and it goes for naught. Excellent job by Haig. Just read this all the way. Quick pitch, good speed. Makes a great open field tackle. I like the decision, the way you're playing on defense. Nebraska has seven points. They got that from the two-yard line after an interception. Yeah. So I, I think it was the right gamble. I like the play call. Haig just made a spectacular tackle in the open field against a very shifty runner in DeMarco Murray. And, and, and a note here, Ron, the offensive line for Oklahoma, it looks like uh, they've lost Brody Eldridge, who was starting at left guard. And because uh, Tavares Jeffries, who was suspended last week, not here this week because of the death in the family, now Brian Leepak, who's usually a center, has to play left guard. So against this defensive line, it's getting even tougher for Oklahoma with this offensive line that has struggled all year. Right now, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. 
Well, we might as well talk about the fellows we talked about at the top. Uh, for Sue, that those numbers don't uh, don't tell the whole story. Blocked field goal, tipped pass uh, on a uh, on a screen, just been all over the field. And also a blocked field goal yep. for uh, and Dominican Sue. Yep. And, and Both of these guys are so good, though, really and to are. know that that what the pros are looking at that they could possibly go the two of them in the top five of the draft is not surprising. Nebraska will go straight ahead. Hello is the ball carrier. And Halu, who hurt his shoulder against uh, Missouri, that great game, that Thursday night game in the rain that they came back, scored 27 points in the fourth quarter. But Sean Watson was telling us yesterday that uh, that shoulder injury, if he takes the wrong hit on it, it'll go right back to where it was. By the way, that stoppage just a moment ago was a clock malfunction. They got it squared away. Hello breaks it out. 40, 50, cuts over, cuts again, 30, 20. 15 and finally caught from behind by Austin Box. 63 yards on the scamper from scrimmage. Alou does an excellent job, breaks into the secondary. A wonderful block at the point of attack by Jacob Hickman, the center who actually pulled around and got up in the hole and blocked the linebacker knocked him right to the ground and a little broke right off of that and and Ed because he kept using his own man as a shield he wound up picking up a couple uh, maybe an extra 15 yards on the play very smart running he is such a difference maker and this offense has not been the same since he's been banged up could barely practice the last few weeks. This week was the first time he's been able to go through the full practice. Well, but had 169 yards against Virginia Tech, which, as we all know, a very good defense. So, well, Robinson on Thursday goals. when we came out to practice, Robinson virtually took every snap or was in the lineup for every snap with the first team. Yeah. yeah. So we we're a little surprised when we heard Halu was going to be able to go. Lee pitches the ball loose, scramble for it. And I believe Oklahoma has made the recovery. That just went right through Hellu's hands. A flag is down. Gerald McCoy comes up with the football. Illegal formation on the offense. Too many men in the backfield. That penalty's declined. First down. And Zach Lee, who has taken over for Cody Green, he stretches it out, and it just it goes right through Halu's hands. He, he just he may have been trying to look at the defenders because there were so many white shirts flowing with the ball, and Bo Pelini just can't believe it. And remember, Iowa State game, they lose. Eight turnovers and lose that ball game nine to seven, and it's almost deja vu. Well, you could also see uh, the offensive coordinator visiting with with Lee, saying, "You know, <laughs> why at that time a timeout has been called?" So we'll take it with them, seven to nothing, Huskers, and they blew a wonderful opportunity. Well, the 1978 rivalry. You remember this one? An eye back by the name of I M Hip. And that was the go ahead touchdown. Nebraska defeated number one Oklahoma 17 to 14. Welcome back to College Football presented by Southwest Airlines, where our score is Nebraska 7 and Oklahoma nothing. Quick pass to Broyles out in the flat. That's a nice job of corralling him. And you saw every player who was in the flat defensively break down, chatter the steps, and it's like, okay, now come through us. It's amazing how well coached both of these defenses are. It's not surprising, but talk about a blown opportunity for Nebraska. Oh, the, the margin for area when you're playing against a defense this good. And their, their margin is so small anyway because offense. of the problems of offense. 
five, has ten, and bolts his way into the secondary. That's going to be a pickup of very close to 15 yards, and it's Matt O'Hanlon who made the stop. And this is what Oklahoma likes to do with this speed offense. A little slower now that uh, Sam Bradford is out, but once they get a good play, they like to go pretty quick. Well, it's a good call by Oklahoma because Sue is not in the ball game, but he very quickly came off the bench and is back out on the field. Pass in the flat. Caught by Murray. What an open field tackle, Philip Dillard. This young man is having some kind of football game tonight. Well, we already talked about how he did not play. He was struggling with the middle linebacker position. He was having a hard time making the calls. It was slowing him down, so they moved him to outside linebacker where he could just run free, and you can see Boy. what type of runner he is. Tell you, an open field tackle. A Murray in the open field is not easy. Took him high and took him down. Jones, heavy pressure, going to be hit. And he'll not get away. He'll be sacked, and this one may be shared by all four of the front four. I think Crick was the first man to get to him, and it's the second sack of the night because Dillard had the first back in the first quarter. Well, it's amazing how quickly these guys, Crick just does such a good job. Sue finishes it off. But boy, Crick, even when Sue is gone, you get Stein Cooler in there at the other side. It was interesting, Bo Pelini said, this defense may be better next year because these guys are getting that experience. Hard to believe, but it's true. Third down. They need 21 yards to pick up the first. Crick back there under pressure and bumps into Jones, and the pass goes awry. Incomplete, and it'll be kicking time. Well, a really smart play by Landry Jones. Two line stunts. They brought the right defensive end down inside. Crick running around. They, they want grounding, but but DeMarco Murray was standing right there. It was actually a really smart play by Landry Jones to throw that into the ground. Tress Way standing by to kick. This is the third time that OU has punted here in the first half. Boy, this is a rocket as far as height. Way up there. Now takes a big bounce for Nebraska and that's going to be 50 yards on the kick. Well the Aflac trivia question the name in Dominican is Nigerian in descent. What is the translation of the name and the translation is House of Spears. Sue's uh, father Michael is from Cameroon and his mother Bernadette is from Jamaica. Of course Cameroon just south of Nigeria on the African continent and his father is a Mechanical engineer out in Portland, Oregon, runs his own company, and and Dominican will graduate in December with a degree in construction management. So he's going to have a fine NFL career, but he's also going to be able to have a career afterwards if he'd like as well. Big opening for Robinson. Yeah, you're right. And visiting with him yesterday, an extremely bright young fellow. And his mother is a school teacher, and uh, it was very important to his family that he got his education. Very important to him. And he's worked very hard in school. And it was interesting, you know, Bo Pelini said when we first got here, very good player, but didn't really match the work ethic with the play. And once he started working hard and seeing how much better he got, he really bought into what they were teaching him. Exactly on second down. Keeps the ball and is back to the line of scrimmage. That's just about it. Only three races remaining. Jimmy Johnson holds a commanding lead. In fact, as they go to the Dickies 500 in Texas tomorrow, should Johnson finish 10th in all three of the final races, he still has got it. So he has totally been dominant. 2.30 Eastern time at ABC. That's when the coverage begins on NASCAR Countdown. Zach Lee now in coming in Cody Green did get the start tonight for Nebraska but uh, just looked real shaky so Zach Lee the junior comes in probably a better play right now third and four for Nebraska to have the thrower in. Pressure from McCoy ball is thrown too high and incomplete and a fourth down situation Kyrie Cooper the intended receiver you get a look at Cody Green the freshman out of Dayton Texas who started tonight. And uh, they had brought him in to try to get some type of running game going. Quentin Castile had been 
thrown off the team back in August. Alou got hurt. Rex Burkhead, a promising freshman, got hurt. But they need a thrower in right now. Henry waits for the snap. Sixth punt of the first half for Nebraska. Well, another wobbly spiral. But it bounces away from Broyles and is touched out of bounds just inside the 30. ABC Tuesday, the number one new drama on television has arrived. ABC's V. Over 18 million viewers welcomed the visitors from beyond. And we're just saying don't miss a second of the series. Critics are calling electrifying, stunning, and instantly addicting. ABC's V. All new Tuesday, 8. 7 o'clock central on ABC. 338 left until halftime. 7 0 Nebraska. Low pass to Jones. Pass over the middle is caught at the 45 yard line by Kenny. Both teams with only one timeout left. Kenny uh, getting a lot of playing time because Brandon Kaleeb. Hurt his ankle last week against Kansas State. Does not look like he's going to be able to go tonight. Oklahoma in the hurry up. Pass over the middle. This one thrown behind the intended receiver, Dewan Miller. And that'll stop the clock with 3.11 until halftime. Well, that one just was out of rhythm for Landry Jones. Didn't seem to get his feet set right through it behind Miller, who was just running a slant. They have already snapped it, faked the run, and the pass over the middle is caught at the 40 yard line by Broyles, and he'll pick up another seven yards after that. First and 10 OU at the 32 yard line, and it's Matt O'Hanlon after a 14 yard gain. Well, and the throw before was a little off target. That one could not have been thrown any better over the heads of a linebacker and a cornerback to get to Broyles. Jones here comes pressure open over the middle that is Brown and he will take it inside the 25 not enough for the first down but very very close what an excellent call that time by offensive coordinator Kevin Wilson calling the uh, screen when a blitz was coming off the right side hurry up again here's Brown cuts it back into the middle he'll have the first down and takes it to the 19 yard line clock shows 217 remaining until intermission Huskers lead at seven to nothing coming up the Capital One halftime report with scores and highlights from around the country or Sam Bradford had the shoulder surgery this is Murray tries to cut it inside and maybe a gain of one but he had to fight really hard to get back to the line of scrimmages Pierre Allen Pierre has had a nice ball game tonight for the Huskers comes over to make the tackle play action pressure on Jones throws it in the flat has it complete to Hannah and he is tackled immediately after a short game. All right, you're in field goal range here. I, I, I kind of like a corner route. Try to get something to Miller, your tall receiver here. Maybe fake like he's running to the post and then bang it outside and see if you can't get one here. Oh, handling the safety now coming back, so you've got a deep cover that the corner may be open. Nebraska showing blitz and a timeout has been called. I believe that's the Sooners who called it. Seven to nothing. Huskers and the Sooners are threatening. Well, it's another sellout here tonight. And these fans want so desperately for this football team to get back to the plateau that, that they were for decades. And uh, Bo Pelini and his coaching staff Fans want it done yesterday, yep. but they are showing improvement in every area, but the offense still has got so much youth and very mistake prone.
Third down. And the line to make will be the eight yard line, just outside the eight. Swings it out to Murray. Murray cuts it back inside and is going to be tackled short of the mark. Philip Dillard again with a key defensive play for Nebraska. And here comes Tress Way, who has yet to make a field goal at the collegiate level. He took over the number one job against Kansas two games ago. Remember, he yanked one earlier and had one blocked against Indomitian and Sue. And I started to say, let's see where Sue is lined up because there he is right in the middle, which should be just about the flight path of the ball. 28 yard field goal attempt. Good pass. The kick is up. And he got it. Squeezed it in on the right side. Let's take a break. 24 seconds left till halftime. So welcome back to Lincoln. Absolutely gorgeous night. In fact, the weather. The weather in October was not good up here. And in all of November, we're not very deep into the month, but it's it's been wonderful. Tonight's supposed to go only into the, the 40s. And uh, November That's in, right, in Lincoln can be, yeah. it is. That means that it went to, what, 60-something today, and it is kind of balmy here. You can see uh, these guys decided they didn't need all their clothes to come to the ball game tonight because it was not cold enough. Well, you would assume Bo Pelini, a defensive coach, is going to have Sean Watts as an offensive coach sit on this one. Let's get let's get into the half. Be very happy. We're up seven three. Yeah, they'll step out of bounds and stop the clock at twenty two seconds. Here's some interesting numbers in the first half. Nebraska. They have one first down. They have one turnover. 64 yards in penalties, and they lead the ball game seven to three. Well, Mukamura made the interception, took it down to the two, and they had a two-yard touchdown drive. That's right. And it was a, it was a nice play. Zach Lee made a, a a nice throw to Ryan Hill on a play action, so got something out of it. Bo Pelini is beating up that gum. <laughs> Better the gum than the official. <laughs> well, he's doing a bit of that too. You know, at some point, he's a very fiery guy. At some point. Uh, you know he cost his team last year against Virginia Tech in a ball game that he got a penalty at some point he's got to settle down a little bit. So the crowd many of them beginning to stand as they head to the locker room. Seven to three at halftime the Huskers leading over the Oklahoma Sooners three seconds down to two down to one and it'll be Nebraska with a four point margin at the intermission and now let's go to John Saunders with the Capital One halftime report John. Matthews Band is our featured band all season long on Saturday Night Football, including songs from their new album, Big Whiskey and the Grugrux King, as we welcome you back to Lincoln for Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines. And our score is the Huskers 7 and the Sooners 3. Well, Ed, we said off the top of the telecast, this is what we expected, and uh, it has been a defensive struggle. There's no question about that. And now the thing I think for Oklahoma you've got to be careful because you haven't been able to block Sue very well. He's now got a half time of rest. Remember he had to go out a couple of times because you're in hurry up. Just be careful. Maybe get him running a little bit. Get that old front running with some screens. Get it out the broils. Some. Don't, don't let him take it over. Something else that we'll take a closer look at as Oklahoma comes on offense. They are getting very thin in the offensive line. Here's the kick. It's going to go four yards deep and it'll be returned. Madhu. Well, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary halftime stats. Well, if you like offense, turn your head. This is not pretty. 80 yards total. 
for Nebraska. They made a change at quarterback. They came out and started with the true freshman Cody Green. He did not look great. So Zach Lee came in, but that 63 of those 80 came on that Hello run. Well, this is Brown, and he'll have a couple, but that's about it. And it's Indomitian and Sue. They're not booing, but uh, not surprising. Sue and uh, McCoy, we touted them highly coming off the top of the telecast, and they have not disappointed in the first half. In fact, neither defense, because as you pointed out, they have, what, 17 yards on 23 carries other than the 63-yard run. And they play so physical up front for Nebraska, you just can't move them. Necktie. Short yardage again. You know, it's interesting. A lot of times you see defensive linemen that charge really hard up the field. But if you notice, Sue plays with a really balanced stance because he's so powerful in his hands and lower body that he doesn't have to really lunge forward to knock back the offensive lineman. He can just do it with his hands. Pressure up the middle. The ball is too high. Intended for Dewan Miller, and it'll be punting time for the Sooners. Well, you saw Sue on the play before how he defends the run that time on the pass, just so quick off the ball, made a quick swing move, and was right in the face of Landry Jones. He had to throw it long before he wanted to. Sam Bradford on the sideline. You can see that following that surgery that he had, he has his uh, arm in a cast. That kick has barely gotten away. And the tackle made immediately on Niles Paul. Well, it's just been a dominant night so far for Indominus and Sue. The blocked field goal. Playing the run almost perfectly. Stephen Good just had his hands. And there's a triple team. And that's the only way they've really been able to get him off the line and then does a great job reading the screen knocking it down and then gets in and almost gets a sack on Landry Jones. On the ground. And Hello who had that long scamper from uh, from scrimmage back in the first half. Wound up with about seven yards on that, but Sam Proctor came over to uh, to put a stop on him. Oh, and a, a blowout game last year as Sean Watson sends in the play with Green standing next to him. After 35 nothing in the first quarter, but Nebraska played well. Halu ended up with 157 yards last year. So well, puts a head down and trying to move behind that offensive front. And let's see when Aon Pyle, where the linesman was coming in, though, he was not going to have the first down. Proctor and Taylor. Combining to stop him short of the first down. And with the inexperience at quarterback, Zach Lee came into the season. He only completed two passes in his entire career. Of course, Joe Gans graduated, but uh, they knew they were going to have struggles in the, in the pass game. Straight ahead, Zach Lee with the quarterback sneak, and he will have the Nebraska first down running off the block of Jacob Hickman the senior out of Bakersfield California the center and you can hear the response from the crowd and uh, I believe that was the first is that the first first uh, third down conversion yeah because they only have two first downs yep Sean Watson the offensive coordinator for Nebraska hello there's not much area to run. Adrian Taylor there to make the stop. And as Ed pointed out off the top of the telecast, if you're going to run away from McCoy, then you still got to, you got to pay the price because Taylor is at the other tackle than Austin English and Jeremy Beal. Uh, and these guys amass a huge number of tackles over the course of the season. Taylor is playing at a real high level. McCoy, obviously the real deal, but Taylor doing a nice job as well. Jeremy Beal makes the defensive stop. And Roy Hello stopped after a short gain. It's going to be third down. And for them to pick up the first to keep this drive going, they're going to take it inside the Oklahoma 45-yard line. And uh, that was right tackle Mike Smith 
for Nebraska, who was slow getting up. He's back in there. He's actually now over at the left tackle, excuse me. But he was slow getting up. Let's see uh, what kind of rush they put over the left side here. Blitz and a stunt and a sack. Keenan Clayton. First time that they have recorded a sack against the Nebraska quarterback tonight. Well, what a nice job by Brent Venables. I think he saw exactly what we saw, was he saw a left tackle that got up slow, so he put three guys over him. And uh, he rushed four to that side, actually. And even though they had the guard, the running back, and the left tackle, they had one more than they could block. Henry's kick. Very high. Broyles from the 18. Looks for the sideline and very wisely runs out when the real estate ran out as well. 42 yards in the punt. Let's take a break. Well, 1982, we continue to look at some of the great games in this series. Turner Gill. Well, he did this a lot. Scrambles into the end zone, and then the interception, Scott Strasburger. With the interception at the end, number three, Nebraska, defeated number 11, Oklahoma, 28 to 24. This is Murray, and he will be stopped after a gain of about three. Well, both of these defenses, when it looks like there's going to be some real estate, it looked like that option was going to break out. But both these defenses, great recovery speed. Jones on second down. That ball almost picked off and it was caught. Caught in the play by Dewan Miller and the gamble hurt Nebraska, but I'll tell you, he is within a breath of making the pickoff. It. Yeah, Alfonso Dennard broke on that ball. But a little bit of a low snap. Dennard goes in and, and Miller does an excellent job. He's a big body guy at 6'4, 224, shielding off the smaller Dennard. Pumped it twice. Now going to go long. Near sideline, and the ball is incomplete, and flags come down from two different areas as Tanell was the man who was the intended receiver. Remember, Tanell was the young man who was hurt, and it looked to me like both of them were pushing off, and I'm not going to be surprised if this isn't against Tanell. Pass interference, number 21 in the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, they were going back and forth, back and forth. And Tunnell came back. He ran the out and up. Great coverage. Yeah, that, that's, that's hand fighting between both players. I don't know that you make that call. Nebraska now seven penalties for 79 yards. Coach Bellini not in total agreement on that one. This is Murray. Takes it straight ahead. Maybe a couple. Jared Crick making the stop, number 94. On right tackle, Corey Brandon got up a little slow after that one with the injuries that they've had. Crick working. Now they have him over good, and well, he's hard to push off too, isn't he? I'm telling you. And look at this hit right here, and that is Indomitian Sue and Murray <laughs> a little slow in getting up. Yeah, they were blowing it dead. No one could hear the whistle. Prior to the snap, false start, number 70 the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Corey Brandon. And they've had to move some, some more bodies in there because we saw Brody Eldridge, who had started at left guard, go his, out. His shoulder must have really taken a shot mm -hmm. because they were taking him to x-ray him have not heard anything as yet 
Jones high over the middle, intercepted by Nebraska, and that's O'Hanlon up the sideline to the 45 and finally knocked out of bounds. Second time that Jones has been intercepted tonight. Well, this is one of those deals where the ball is overthrown, but the receiver, there's O'Hanlon right there. The receiver got pushed inside by the cornerback. I think he got off of the track. That's Miller. I think he got off of the track that Jones was expecting him to be on because the cornerback had pushed him down inside and O'Hanlon standing over the top just waiting for the ball and a nice return by O'Hanlon found some real estate. So let's see if Nebraska can take advantage. They had a 63 yard run by Helu in the first half and they came away with no points because they turned it over. Lee going to try to run and he gets collared by Travis Lewis. I tell you, you cannot be indecisive. It's like traffic in New York. You cannot be indecisive. You'll get totally run over. Well, the same thing when you're playing a Sooner defense. You know, don't get out there and say, should I go left, right, or right? You better take it on up the field or slide. Yeah, exactly. One of the two. Zach Lee took a little uh, hitch step there before he took off. But I think they need to keep moving the pocket. I like that call by Sean Watson. Get out of the way of this defensive front. Brooks in motion. Helu tries to turn the corner. And it's Franks. And boy, here come flags down from the backside of the play late. To the play, personal foul, number 84 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Frank Alexander, that's a big one. And Nebraska getting a little help now, and they may need it. Huskers lead it seven to three. Little reverse out by Lee, and he throws the ball complete. That's Kenny, and Kenny will take it inside the 15-yard line and down to around the 13. Well, this is kind of similar to what Kansas State started doing last week in the second half against Oklahoma. Is the bootleg. And uh, Grant Gregory from Kansas State, his biggest plays in that second half were when he was moving out of the pocket. This one, that time, uh, Kenny came from all the way across the formation and just mirrored Zach Lee. And Zach Lee threw a nice little softball. But don't throw that hard. It's the longest pass play of the night. And they have spotted it actually at the 15 yard line. 13 yards on that last play. Hello, tries it to the right. There is nothing. At the bottom of that stack is Brian Jackson. You could see the. Number two right there. He made penetration and that play goes for a two yard loss. Well, I know they had the 163 yard run that was between the tackles but for the most part there's just been nothing there and I know that Sean Watson wants to stay true to that and he probably it should get a couple of in the in there but I think it's got to be all misdirection get Lee rolling to uh, rolling out of the pocket with a run pass option. I just think they have to do almost all misdirection and rollouts the rest of the game. Lee keeps it inside the 15 down to around the 12 and it's Franks again on a stop. And the option game is something that they uh, Nebraska has had to add a little more in to get some kind of running game going. And now you're you're in that third and long third and six eh, third and medium. But uh, I think again go with the misdirection and maybe Zach Lee rolling to his right again and layer two or three guys with one guy running with him in the end zone I think. Legate the fullback the tailback is Robinson. And they fake it to the freshman pass in the flat the ball is blocked and it's Franks who got a hand on it. How many passes have we had batted this evening. 
I think it's close to a half dozen if you put the two teams together. Well, the thing that's impressive is when guys are coming unblocked, like that time France was coming on a blitz, and how quick they are to realize what's going on. As soon as Zach Lee goes to throw, Franks, who was blitzing, just leaves his feet. Of course, a great athlete. And we've seen that a bunch where guys have great recognition. <laughs> All right, so the field goal attempt is going to come from, what are we saying, 18 or 19. Let's call it 19, so a 29-yard attempt. Nailed it. Let's take a timeout. New score, Huskers 10 and the Sooners 3. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by... Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. And Nissan Maxima. Proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. If you're in this area, there's a new area on the Nebraska campus that they proudly display all the school's football trophies, memorabilia, and they had a ribbon cutting featuring Heisman Trophy winners Eric Krauts, Mike Rozier, and Johnny Rogers. This has been a big weekend as far as legendary names and faces being back on campus. Madhu in the kick return, he gets tagged short of the 15-yard line. Well, top AFC contenders fight for conference supremacy on ESPN's Monday Night Football at 8.30 Eastern. It's the Steelers against that tough Denver defense. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 7 Eastern time. In the flat, it's Brown, and Brown is finally going to be pushed out of bounds after a gain of 10 yards. Matt Weiner in New York, what do you got for us? Well, I've got an AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. Now, how about this for a day's work? Stanford's Toby Gerhardt carried it 38 times today for 223 yards and three touchdowns to help fuel Stanford's upset of Oregon today. To cast your vote, text the word vote to 345-345 from your mobile phone. Toby Gerhardt, we have seen him in person. And uh, the injury, we will get a check on O'Hanlon here. Let's take a break right now. 10 3, Nebraska. Look at these uh, these numbers right here. Last week, Oklahoma's offense, 164 yards rushing, 39 tonight, two touchdowns last week, and none this evening but it's still early we got 526 left in the third what are your tickets that's a world-class mustache right there <laughs> great hit gear also with no face mask first and ten Sooners here comes pressure got it over the middle and it's incomplete and that was Murray out of the backfield I would not want to be a quarterback in this ballgame. These guys have every time they go back, someone is in their face. And this offensive line for Oklahoma that had been struggling all year had to move some guys around again when Eldridge got hurt earlier in the game. And of course, Tavares Jeffries out with a death in his family as well. So you're thin at guard. Jones over the middle. Ball tip incomplete. DeMarco Murray again the intended receiver and that was Gomes who came in the Sooner coaching staff asking for a possible pass interference but no flag came and it's third down and ten. James Hanna checks into the ball game. Sophomore at a flower mound Texas. There's number 82. Sooners are three of 12 and third down conversions tonight.
Boy, here comes more pressure, and the ball had to be thrown early. And it was Hannah, the man I was talking about, who had just checked in. Gomes was one of those leading the way, but Nebraska was trying to light him up. And that's a lot of pressure on a kid with no more experience than he has. And Carl Pellini has just called a masterful game. This is an all-out blitz. So you've got man coverage on the outside, and, and you – Hannah would have been open if, if uh, you'd have had time to throw it, but because you get there so quickly, it's not there. It's the risk reward you take, and they got the reward. Pressure up the middle, and I'll tell you, they almost knocked the blockers back into the punter. This is a dandy, though. All the way to the 15 yard line is Paul looking for some place to run. Gets a block, 25, and will not get to the 30. Well, they're going to call a penalty on Gomes, and I think this is a bad call. It looked to me like Gomes got on the side of the defender with his head in front. 60 yards on that punt, 13 on the return. And I think they're going to get it about the uh, seven and a half yard line. But watch number seven, Gomes. During That's the return, not the call there. Illegal block in the back. But number watch seven on the return team. Seven on 32. That's not a block in the back. You can hit the guy in the shoulder, but that is not a block in the back. So Nebraska would have had okay field position, and now they're backed way up inside their own 10. Well, let's take a look at the Big 12 update. Jordan Shipley of Texas today, school record 273 yards and a win over Central Florida. Kansas fourth consecutive Big 12 loss. And uh, Nick Florence of Baylor, 427 yards passing. Robinson, that's going to be very short yardage. And with uh, Kansas losing, looks like they're out of the race in the north. And Nebraska controls their own destiny in the north Kansas State sitting on top at four and two came back from the dead really what a nice job by Bill Snyder and his staff but Nebraska plays Kansas Iowa State now has four losses so they're out of it and they play Kansas and Colorado on the way out so control their own destiny in the north Lee. Pitch back goes to Robinson. Robinson puts his shoulder down, passes a pretty good lick on to Keenan Clayton. Well, we're just talking about what happened today. Here are the standings in the Big 12 North that have been updated. Kansas State, a little surprise there. Four and two conference mm -hmm. play in Nebraska, Colorado, Iowa State. Probably the one that surprises me the most is Missouri at one and four. Well, today losing against Baylor at home, but. The crazy thing is Nebraska because they play Kansas State and Colorado on the way out they could even lose tonight and still control their own destiny unless you got into a three or four way tie and then they need some help. Blitz coming up the middle and Robinson no place to run that's Travis Lewis one of the first people to get there and to close the door. And I'll tell you when you are in this kind of field position. These guys are pulling out the stops, the two defensive coordinators, and saying, okay, beat us if you can because we're going to have more numbers than you have blockers up front. A little surprise, Roy Hallou Jr. was not in the ball game there. Makes me wonder if he maybe took a hit on that shoulder that's been bothering him. This is the eighth punt of the night for Nebraska. Now the spiral is turning over and boils on a run at the 42. And the Huskers will make the stop short of midfield. 48 on the kick and nine on the return. Well, the race to uncover the greatest mystery mankind has ever faced is on. ABC's Flash Forward. All new on Thursday, 8, 7 Central on ABC. Well, you're starting to get a feeling that Oklahoma at some point needs to answer on offense because of the penalty, the block in the back penalty on Nebraska's punt return. Henry had a nice punt, but a decent little return. So now you get another good shot at field position. Oklahoma's got to make something happen eventually on offense if they want to win this thing. Brown 
has five, has ten, counted off at about 11 yards. They'll say his knee hit at the 40-yard line, but a big opener, and he slashed very quickly through that hole. Asante is the man who made the stop. And here's uh, Dominican Sue working a double team there. Well, this one. There was not enough double team on this play as Sue steps up into the hole along with Philip Dillard. You know, it was interesting talking to Sue last week. Baylor tried to cut block him on almost every single play, and he felt like he started playing a little uh, not with not enough aggression because he was trying to protect himself from going down. Well, he's playing with plenty of that tonight. Second down and long. This is Brown. Little bit of a counteraction. They continue to bring DeMarco Murray across the formation. Well, and if you notice, the motion goes, and that's Larry Asante who's down. Brown on this drive, three carries for 22 yards. So he has been really big on this series right here. Got plenty of time on the play clock, and they go with the running play. And this time, it is Jared Crick who will come over to make the hit on Chris Brown. Well, when you have two guys that are working this well together in the middle, Sue got great penetration on that play. So Crick scrapes off of it to make the tackle. They really are in sync. Quickly, play action. Rolls it to the left, throws the ball out to incomplete. Dewan Miller is who they wanted. And I'll tell you, Dewan Miller at 6-4, when we were down there earlier for the Baylor game, they were talking about the offensive coaches were that, that they needed to get him more into the rhythm of what was going on because he's such a big target and can really run well. Jones has missed his last four passes. Let's see if he can get this one. He does. Got to complete the ball. Boyles goes airborne, but he's short of the first down by a couple. And I think if you're Oklahoma at 127 left in the third, I think you kick this field goal. Looks like they're going to go for it. If you are going to go for it, I think the stretch to the right misdirection back to the left is the play. Actually, it's less than two yards. Fourth and just a little bit over one. Running play with Brown, and it's whistled down, and it's going to be movement before the snap. And that means that Tress Way will come trotting on the field, the redshirt freshman out of Tulsa. Prior to the snap, false start, number 71 in the offense, five yard penalty. Of course, that's left tackle Trent Williams who's struggling tonight with penalties, but I can understand on that fourth and one. I, you struggled in your field goal, felt like they need those points. Now you don't have a choice, and always an adventure with the big yep. guys they have in the middle for Nebraska. Well, 42 yard attempt, and Dominican Sue had a block back in the first half. Good pass from center, and he's missed this one. Mm -hmm. You know, Jimmy Stevens was perfect 11 for 11 inside of 40 yards. And Tress Way, I guess through practice, beat him out. Would not be surprised at all if that's going to flip flop and we'll see Jimmy Stevens for the rest of the ballgame because Tress Way is struggling. Even the one he made barely snuck in. Yeah, he did. He kind of squeezed it through on the right side. So you can see the young man obviously very disappointed. As he had one block and has missed uh, the other two. And of course, Trent can't be real happy with himself because that, that five yard penalty that he cost his team, they they had to uh, go for the field goal. And you could see Stevens was getting up. up and going over to start warming up. Lee, keeper, two yards, Quentin Carter. There to make the tackle, and you look at uh, Stevens as he starts to loosen that leg up. I don't blame him. I go over there. It's very cold. 
If you're second string you probably haven't swung the leg much in a game like this you have to figure either Henry or Tressway or Stevens if he goes in which I, I would be surprised if he wasn't the choice for the next uh, field goal or PAT needs to get himself loose. They're going to play a big factor. 23 seconds. That's all we have left as the clock now begins to run here in the third quarter. Lee looking, still looking, got a pass right over the middle, and Alu makes the reception, and Heller will have about four yards in the play. Ryan Reynolds defensively. By the way, Matt O'Hanlon was down for a time, and they helped him off the field. We have not gotten an update, but it certainly did look as though that it was a that a cramp is what he had, rather than something more serious. That's the end of the third quarter. Let's take a timeout. Huskers 10-3. In honor of uh, Veterans Day, which is next Wednesday, and you can see the flag at half staff here tonight. And of course, they are that way all across the country in uh, respect for the people at uh, Fort Hood uh, in Texas who were killed this past week. And uh, we'll talk more about Veterans Day as this uh, fourth quarter unfolds. Well, that pitch goes to Mike McNeil, the tight end. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Well, that play right there shows you why these stats are the way they are. 86 yards in penalties and only 112 yards of offense. But the reason this score is at 10 3 is because Amukamora had the interception to the two yard line and then O'Hanlon got one down into Oklahoma territory that resulted in the field goal. No, they took too long. Prior to the snap, false start, number 14 of the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. from center they did not have the pressure on and the driving kick hits at the 30 takes a Nebraska bounce away from the receiver so uh, it'll wind up with a pretty good kick by Henry so Ed as we talk about this fourth quarter and just getting things underway both of these ball clubs penalties at tonight have just really cut into their efforts both coaches not real happy with their ball clubs well they're both kind of intense guys Youngstown Ohio guys who uh, are both uh, in their players faces Bob Stoops very upset at Frank Alexander after that penalty it's worth noting Austin English does not have his helmet. So he may be done for the game. That's why Frank Alexander, after that penalty, didn't come out of the ball game. They don't have anybody to replace him. Murray bounces off a tackler, bounces off another one, and stepped out of bounds at around the 41 yard line. Boy, that is a heck of an effort because he was having some good defensive players take a shot at him, and he got by them. Gain of 12. Murray, a guy who. Just adds a little different wrinkle. Brown is such a good inside runner, and Murray has really uh, improved his power running. Kevin Wilson talks about how they always work with him because he's such a good player in space, but he's developed his game as a running back as well. Murray hit inside by Pierre Allen. Now here comes a flag, and there was some late goings on. Now Jarvis Jones and Indomitian Sue were tangled up way away from the play. 
And Jones normally a tackle having to play guard with Eldridge out. After the play, personal foul, number 76 of the offense. Wow. 15 yard penalty, second down. So take a look at it. You see the double team going on. And Sue continues to be pushed and then yep. gets pushed one more time. You, I mean, you have to stop. You want your players to finish. But at some point, you do have to stop. That's the second dead ball foul against Oklahoma in this half. Trent Williams had the first one. Jones looking up the near sideline, and the ball is caught at the 40 yard line by DeWan Miller. Well, this is a nice throw by Jones. And they're hustling up now, Oklahoma, to the line of scrimmage. But he threw it to the back shoulder. He threw it flat, and Miller found it long before the defensive back did. Nice play by DeWan Miller. 32 yards in the pass play. Play action. Jones wants to throw again over the middle. Intercepted. And that is O'Hanlon, his second pick of the night. And the third off Jones. This ball was thrown high to Ryan. Five foot eleven. This ball sails just a little bit, and there's O'Hanlon. Second time tonight that O'Hanlon has taken advantage of a high throw. That ball got away from Jones. Let's take a timeout. 10-3 Nebraska. as we continue to look at this series between the Sooners and the Huskers. Anthony Stafford, you remember that, the touchdown, and then very quickly, Patrick Collins, 65 yards later, number two, Oklahoma, 17-7 over top-ranked Nebraska. That happened in 1987. And this just happened down on the sideline. Josh Heupel, Oklahoma quarterback coach, talking with his, uh, his young quarterback, and actually, you know, words of encouragement, see, because you can't have him losing nope. his confidence. And then look who, and then next came Bob Stoops. Gave him a pat on the chest because he's your guy with Sam Bradford out with uh, shoulder surgery. And you know, that's a tough part for a quarterback. When a right guard makes a mistake, you get a two yard loss. When a quarterback makes a mistake, you get an interception and it, you know, it's a, it's a turnover. And so you, you, this young man has to keep his confidence. He's a very calm guy. He, they, they talk about it. He's very steady, very much like Sam Bradford in that way. And they can't lose his confidence. Not a good night so far for him, but they're going to need him to make a play before this thing's over. Nebraska leads 10 3. We have about to hit 12 minutes left in this ball game. Out in the flat. Hello. 25 at the 30. That's a first down, and he stays in bounds. And all of a sudden, that's going to start becoming very, very important to eat as much of the clock away as you can. It's good for 15 yards before Proctor stopped him. And that was a nice job by Niles Paul, who was out on the edge there. Just kept his body in front of the guy who was guarding him, and, and just that was what broke another five or six yards for Halu. Halu, three receptions, 15 yards. Exactly five of seven for 35 yards throwing tonight. Under pressure, sack. That's uh, Jeremy Beal. Well, Beal did a wonderful job defending against the cut block. Helu, the running back, comes over and tries to cut him down. And he just knocked him down and kept his feet. And because there was great coverage behind him, able to get up, make the play, and make the sack. So it's a second down and 13. We'll play action and look at the pressure on him and he just throws it away and very wisely. That was Keenan Clayton. And again, when you're deep in your own territory, they're going to just pull out the stops. Well, did you know that uh, Bob Stoops and Bo Pelini both attended the same high school, Cardinal Mooney High School in Youngstown, Ohio? And I'll tell you what, in visiting with uh, with Carl Pelini, who is uh, the brother, of course, of Bo, uh, and the defensive coordinator, the the 
the feelings that the, the, the entire Polini family, for that matter, has for the Stoops family and the influence on both of their lives, it's just really tremendous. Long pass, almost intercepted at the 25 by Brian Jackson. But as Carl told the story, he said there were not many classes in Youngstown that didn't have both a Polini and a Stoops uh, in one of those classes. Well, and it's no mistake that the Stoops brothers and the Polini brothers, Brian Jackson almost makes an interception, which would have been just like a punt. Coach defense because Ron Stoops, Bob's father, was a defensive coordinator at Cardinal Mooney and such a great man. They all used to go over and watch film and we asked Bo, would you coach offense if he was an offensive coach? He said, yeah, maybe, but he coached defense, so that's what we do. This is Boyles from the 25, spinning, and he will go down at the 33-yard line. So we'll take a timeout. 10-7, or 10-3, I beg your pardon, Huskers. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by... Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. The Ford F-150. Built Ford Tough. And Dr. Pepper. Drink it slow. Doctor's orders. The National Museum of Roller Skating contains the largest collection of historical roller skates dating back to 1819 in the world. <laughs> well, Zach Lee got hit by Gerald McCoy really hard in the midsection and he got up on the sideline and was wincing and doubled over. He's up throwing the ball. Looks like he's going to be okay, but uh, a good clean hit by McCoy. But a hard one. Now. Yes. Those guys don't come back there in a real good mood. Got this one complete. 40, 45 to Marco Murray. And Murray has become such a huge asset as a receiver. You can see how fluid he is mm -hmm. when they cross him or if they circle him out, regardless of which. It's 15 yards on the play, and he's going to catch it when you get it close to him. Good protection that time, too. That took a while to develop. Landry Jones to the other side. Murray breaks the tackle. Going to have the first down, plus about five more. Amukamari will make the tackle, and it's good for another 15 yards. And Landry Jones has bounced right back. He got a little pep talk from his uh, position coach, Josh Heupel, and his head coach, and that's two really nice throws in a row. That one under pressure. Oklahoma with the hurry up. They continue. You can see plenty of time left on the play clock. They still got 14 seconds. Under 10 minutes to play in our ball game. Quick pass and a little misread there as uh, Tunnell didn't turn around. Our situation 10 3, Nebraska on top. Low pass. Picked it up in time, and the ball is thrown too high. That was intended for Trent Rattery. And all of a sudden, you're in a position where you had a nice drive going. Now you've got a third and ten. I think this, ha this has a feeling of four-down territory to me, so I think maybe you look for a screen. Uh, maybe a screen over to Murray, who's lined up in the slot to the right. Oklahoma 3 of 14 on third down conversions tonight. And now the timeout has been called by the Sooners. 9.44 left in our ballgame. Third down and 10. Jones great protection ball thrown complete and knocked out of bounds at the 27 yard line is Brian Orion Broyles and boy that's a big one right there and that was a really nice pitch and catch he was right on it and Broyles of course had that amazing play against Kansas State last week after a first and 45 they found themselves at third and 24 made a short catch made a couple of guys missed and picked up 
twenty five yards for a key third down conversion maybe the offensive play of the year for Oklahoma because Kansas State was nipping at their heels the entire second half. Previous play is under further review. Really on the field is first down. They're uh, reviewing the spot. First review of the night for us. Now let's see where the ball is when he gets hit. Now this is the one where we should really be able to see it. I think they'll uphold the call on the field. Ruling on the field stands. First down. Right, and when they say it stands, it means there was not indisputable video evidence to overturn it. And, uh, I believe that was the right review, and and I think the right thing to review it because you get the fourth down and have a big decision for Oklahoma. Three wide receivers to the top of your screen, which is the right. Murray. They try him right up the middle, and it's going to be not real long. A Turner on the tackle. Well, Ron Franklin, along with Ed Cunningham, coming to you tonight from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, the annual matchup between the Sooners and the Cornhuskers. All 10 points off turnovers for Nebraska tonight. Jones over the middle, and the ball is just a little bit behind Murray. Couldn't hold on. Well, you saw those fourth quarter numbers for Landry Jones last week against Kansas State. He was 10 for 10, and, and Dominic and Sue just throws. At, and he is just so powerful. Grabs the wrists of Jarvis Jones and just throws him into Landry Jones. Blitz coming up the middle. Pass, far sideline, incomplete. Eric Haig was the man who had the defensive play. Receiver wanted pass interference, but I don't think that was close. That was a good, tough defensive play. Ryan Broyles, the intended receiver. And right decision here, I think, by Oklahoma to go for it on fourth down. And I think Broyles has to be your man. Middle receiver or Murray. Top. Yep. Or Murray. Line to make is the 17. Incomplete to Nell, the intended receiver, and he wound up and threw that thing with yeah. a lot of heat on yeah. it, which surprises me a little bit. Wasn't very accurate and threw it too hard. You can be inaccurate if you throw it a little softer, but if you're going to throw the heat, it's got to be right on the money. And he overthrew to Nell. But the reason I think this was the right decision, not great field position now for Nebraska. And uh, they haven't been able to do much offensively at all. 128 total yards. So Bob Stoops, of course, very comfortable putting his defense back on the field. Let's take a break. Huskers still lead by seven. And we are back. And a reminder, stay tuned for the Ford wrap-up after the ball game. Hello, big opening. Has five, has ten, counted off at about 12 yards. Sam Proctor finally tripped him up. Well, not a very good job by the two linebackers, Travis Lewis and Austin Box. They both just run in and bury themselves. We saw that a little bit against Miami. If there's one weakness of this Oklahoma defense, occasionally their linebackers just run up and bury themselves instead of playing the gap they're supposed to. This is Hello breaks it outside, and he's going to be very close to another first down. Proctor again defensively will get the number as far as the tackle. Missed it by a couple of yards, but it's a gain of eight. And now that clock will really start to zoom down as we're about to go under eight minutes to play. And that's Bobby Jack Wright, the defensive back coach, talking to Proctor. Not happy of how he filled on that run game. When those linebackers bury, the safeties have to be there to fill the gap. Hello is 
is loose again and going to be ridden out of bounds by Jonathan Nelson, but not before he reaches a 24 yard run. What a difference maker Alou is when he's healthy. Bang that shoulder. That's Jackson. Yeah, missed, missed it. it. He didn't gather his feet. Came in there, thought he was going to get a knockout shot for a tackle for loss. But Alou, you know, he felt it maybe just tired, but remember, he's got that shoulder. Doesn't look like he fell on it. Maybe just tired after a couple long runs. Can't blame him. And this is Robinson, the freshman who was coming to ball game number 27, replacing Hello, giving him a breather, and Quentin Carter made the stop on him. Well, and the way you've pounded it now, if I'm Sean Watson, I would think of a play action pass. Because remember, Proctor came over, got yelled out about not helping enough on the run. So now the safeties, you've got to think, are going to be up on their toes, ready to come downhill. Run a little play action and see if you can't get. Those safeties down and get one to maybe Niles Paul over the top on a post. Marcel Jones coming out of the ball game and who's met by the trainers. Uh, I don't know if he has shaken up. Well, it appears he is. I was going to say either that or has visibly has blood someplace on his body, which means he has to go to the sideline and and get cleaned up. And uh, Marcel's been battling a shoulder injury, as has Ricky Henry, the right guard, as has the left guard, Keith Williams. This has been a banged up bunch. Second down and 10. And they go with Robinson and a couple of yards, and that's it. ABC Tuesday, the number one new drama on television has arrived. ABC's V. Over 18 million viewers welcomed the visitors from beyond. Don't miss a second of the uh, series. Critics are calling electrifying, stunning, and instantly addictive. ABC's V, all new on Tuesday, 8, 7 o'clock Central on ABC. And now I think you just run this because you're right in Alex Henry's wheelhouse as your kicker, and you can make this a two-score game. Don't turn it over. Hello. And he will take it to around the 26. That will mean 33, about a 43-yard field goal as Jonathan Nelson filled the gap and made the tackle. Hello, 138 yards rushing tonight. The rest of the team won. And here comes Alec Henry. Alex Henry, who has hit 25 straight from inside 50. Bo Pelini says this guy is so cool under pressure. Going to put it down as as I thought at the 33 so a 43 yard attempt. Good pass and he missed it. He pushed that thing to the right and it is still a one score ball game. Well let's take a look at tonight's Southwest Airlines playbook. Well this is just wonderful cornerback play by Prince Amakamura. He is one on one outside against Tanel. And he, and he bangs him at the top of his route, which is totally legal, and redirects him, and he stays right on his hip. And as soon as he sees him, the quarterback, Jones, throw the in-cut. He cuts right in front of Tunnell, but it was that first contact that allowed him to get on his inside hip, and that was a wonderful play. The only offensive, the only touchdown in the game was set up because of Makamura got it down to the two-yard line. What a wonderful play. Murray in motion. Jones keeps it looking deep. Got single coverage, and the ball is incomplete. To now the intended receiver. And I'll tell you what, the jump was timed perfectly. Amukamare was there, and uh, he got a hand on it. Well, Carl Polini has been trying to get. Amukamara to figure out how good he really is. A guy who was a wide receiver when this staff got here. And they've been trying to work on his confidence. Say, you're good enough to be an elite corner. It looks like he's starting to turn that corner. Second down and 10. 526 remaining. Huskers 10 to 3. Jones's pass caught in the flat at the 30. And Dewan Miller, did he get out of bounds? They're going to place it down at the 31 as Dennard was the defender who came over to make the play. Well, and you feel a sense of urgency. It, it feels like this may be. Oklahoma's last chance. Well, that clock is still running, and that's the reason I asked did he get out of bounds, and the official said no. Third down. 
four of 16 are the Sooners and make it five of 17 as the pass was caught and he'll pick up the first down. Matt Weiner let's check in with you in New York. All right Matt crucial drive for the Sooners clock down to 435 Jones looking and throws it complete to Miller breaks the tackle at the 45 and he's going to take it all the way across midfield that will move the chains. Well Dewan Miller is turning into what these coaches expected you Boy. mentioned earlier when we were there for the Baylor game the coaches said we need this guy to compete Royals was hurt and he's really stepped up his game. Jones looking long and he well overthrows this one Royals the intended receiver. You know Miller at 6'4", 224. We jokingly said when when we saw him, he is all airport material because uh, he is a great looking player. But he also was a 400 meter hurdler and when champion he, state of New Jersey. That's that's no state, joke. No, that's that's a lot of great competition he went up against. It's also a gutsy race. Got to be a tough kid mentally. That's for Broyles in that slot. Gets it across to Hannah and number 82 Hannah will take it to just inside the 45 yard line and again it brings up third down and this time third down and six and Ed like in golf this is like eight and ten foot putts yep. you're putting yourself in a position where you're not going to make them all no and, and I think you're going to go for it if you don't get it on fourth so good point maybe good point. maybe something like a corner route with a uh, slant from the outside receiver see if you can't get one. Boy, and a flag goes down for movement. Wow. Correction, I said if you don't make it on fourth. If you don't make it on third, I think you'd go for it on fourth. And now with a third and ten, maybe the thinking is you want to pick up six, seven yards. You don't necessarily have to get the first. So now you bring in a draw or a screen. I don't know if you want to be running a draw with this defensive line. So look for possibly a wide receiver screen or a late screen to Murray who's in the backfield. And it came with a blitz off the corner, and the pass is hit as he throws, and a late flag has come in from deep in center field. Yeah, they're, I think they're getting no handling for holding on Ryan Broyles. Yeah, what Bo is saying, that thing hit in section 314. So if it's defensive holding, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah it yeah. doesn't matter. But. If it's pass interference, then it does. Uh, yep. the head coach is going to be angry again. That's what they're calling. Whoa. And these are smart enough football fans here, as are the Oklahoma fans when you're playing down in Norman. At <laughs> there it is there. The ball's in the air. But he's throwing it to the outside. Yeah, that, that it, they've got to wave that off. And the officials are they're they're gathered. I think they're going to wave this off. Now that ball was uncatchable by anybody on the field. It certainly was uncatchable by Ryan Broyles. He was not even the intended Ed, receiver. Let me tell you something. I think what he did, though, I think they made the wrong call. That should have been. I mean, he was holding. Yep. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. And, and as long as it's holding, the penalty is going to stand. But pass interference, that thing could not have been caught by anybody no. on the field. No, but remember. Uncatchable doesn't matter in a defensive holding. Exactly. That's and, what I mean. And, and that was looked to me like the right call. It's uh, if the defender grabs and holds on while the ball's not in the air, it's holding. It looked like it was right on the edge. And I know they're booing, but I think that was the right call. Now Nebraska, 10 penalties for 101 yards. But they're leading by seven and holding on just barely. We got 338 left in this ballgame. First and 10 from the 39. Pass in the flat got Broyles again and he steps out of bounds maybe a little bit quicker than he wanted to steps out at the 34 and if I were Kevin Wilson I'd go right back to this play maybe over to the left they've had Ryan Broyles on that speed outcut every single time now he's over here to the left go right back to it. Pressure up the middle hit as the ball is thrown and it's 
almost intercepted by O'Hanlon, who went diving for it. And had he picked it off, that would have been number three for him tonight. Well, and that is uh, Dennard, who's uh, getting up injured. Looks like he may have hurt his shoulder. Sure does. Yeah. Sure does. Look at the pressure from Sue right oh. here. He will collide with the quarterback just enough to speed him up. And Sue has gone down. Yep. Sue went down and he's holding his hamstring. You know, I wonder if. If he didn't catch a cramp, that's what it looked like O'Hanlon had because he just, as he was going to line up, he was talking to Crick. And just spun around, and that thing looked like it seized up on him, and he it went did. down that's quickly. That's exactly you know? what happened. And then you can see that Crick is pointing to the ground and screaming to the official to give him a timeout. And now on a third down, because of the incomplete pass, You've got one on one down here at the bottom. Watch for possibly a slant as O'Hanlon walks over to try to take that away. Steinpiller comes in at the 55, replacing Sue. Brown with the run. Stops short. Jared Crick steps up into the hole to make the hit on him. And with because it was third and short and Sue comes back in they had it down where they could run it because they knew they were going on fourth down. I still think you go with that slant and uh, maybe look for it again with Broyles in the slot. Here's the situation 10 to 3. Nebraska 250 left at our ball game. Oklahoma has not converted on a fourth down play tonight. They're 0 of 2. Play clock is down to five. And a timeout has been called by Oklahoma. Well, if you're Oklahoma, you're thinking Oklahoma may be calling a double slant. We saw that to Tunnell earlier on that fourth down. So Carl Pellini, he's got to be talking to his defensive backs about jumping those routes. Of course, Bo Pellini has a background as a defensive back, played it in college. He's got to be telling his corners, watch the slant, get ready to jump it, because I think that's what you're going to get. I think you might get two slant routes over here to the left. Fourth down. They need to take it to the 29-yard line. 238 left in the ball game. Sooners trail by a touchdown. Jones looking pressure from the backside and the ball is tipped and intercepted and it's Diller. Could not have covered this any better. It's going to be that speed out cut again to Broyles. And Nebraska was waiting for it. The middle defensive back, that's exactly what Landry Jones was looking for. Carl Pellini knew that Kevin Wilson had had that called a couple of times. They defended it perfectly, and Landry Jones had nowhere to go. That Crick. was his only read. Crick is the man who got a hand on it. Crick tips the ball. Intercepted, and right now, what the Huskers have to do is run two minutes and 25 seconds off the clock. And for Dillard, a sack already in the ball game. We'll check on how many individual tackles, but that interception is huge. Yep. And uh, with one timeout, Oklahoma, if Nebraska can't pick up the first down, will get this ball back somewhere in the 50 40 second range, depending on how long they take. Carl Pellini, the defensive coordinator, look at his reaction after that intercept. And a hug for Dillard. And, <laughs> well, Ed told you the story earlier in the ball game that he thinks he's one of the great success stories he's ever had. Yep. Guy who didn't get to play the first couple of games, had been demoted, 
They went to him, switched him over to outside linebacker, and he's just playing lights out. Lost his mom last year. Yeah. They were tremendously close, uh, and it just looked as though the world was not going right for him. Look at those defensive tackles over there. And I thought we'd see the slants like we saw on the fourth down before where Landry Jones had it open and just fired the ball high and too hard to Adrian Tunnell. But uh, it was the right defense called by Carl Pellini because they had seen that little semi rollout where Ryan Broyles just runs a couple of steps and then bursts to the outside. And they had their middle nickelback standing there waiting for it. It was a wonderfully defended play. I talked about the respect that these two families have for each other. Carl, who is the defensive coordinator in this game tonight, was on the staff. Finish it in just a moment. Well, the play action didn't work on the bootleg and the tackle made by Jeremy Beal as he stayed right at home. Ron Stoops was on that same staff with him, and Ron Stoops and Oklahoma fans, I'm sure, know this, but uh, he collapsed while he was coaching on the sidelines, mm -hmm. and uh, Carl was one of the men who went there and, and saw Bob Stoops' father on the ground, and, and he came to for a bit, and he said, I'm fine, don't worry about me. They put him in the ambulance, and he passed away before he got to the hospital. Uh, these two families, the kids were very, very close, and as I said, Ron Stoops is the reason that the Pellini brothers went into coaching. Hiddle gets the carry. Let's go to New York. Now they are a juggernaut. 47-38. Our situation, 10-3. Nebraska on top, and the clock has just gone under one minute to play. This is the formation that every coach in the world loves to see. Well, they're actually, they're going to punt. It's not going to be the victory formation. And the key plays in the game tonight. Mukamar with the interception led to the only touchdown. O'Hanlon, one interception on an overthrow. O'Hanlon, two interceptions on an overthrow. And then the tip pass. And Dillard comes up with a huge play. But because there was enough time on the clock, Oklahoma used their one timeout. Now Oklahoma's going to get the ball back. And because of Indomitian and Sue and Crick and all those guys up front, I think Oklahoma is going to have to move the pocket almost every time because without a timeout, you take a sack and that can end the ball game. So look for Oklahoma when they come out, move the pocket. Get out of the way of that rush. Do not allow 93 and 94 to take over the middle of your offensive line and end this game. And Oklahoma looking like they're rushed. They've come close a couple of times tonight. Well, the Gunners for Nebraska are in tight to help block. Here comes the snap, and he gets the kick away. Wobbly driving spiral. Taken by Boyles at the 16. Gets a block. Comes to the sideline. Gets another block. And steps out of bounds on the near sideline. Wow. What an electric, electric player. All of a sudden, this, listen to this crowd. They just, everything was just taken out of them with that return. You know why some are booing, though? A clock, a, a block. Just like they were penalized, did not get block it, did yep. not get called on the sideline. Right. There were a chorus of boos that went up. Now, if you're Landry Jones, you have to know you cannot take a sack. Throw it away. You have no timeouts, and if it's if it goes up before the sticks, you better get up there quick. 41 seconds left in the ball game. Jones over the middle, and the ball is tipped. I believe that was Barry Turner who got a hand up. There was a stunt on that side. And they had Broyles. Broyles, if he would have caught that, may have picked up some yardage. He had a step and a half on his man. Previous play is under review. 
Are they reviewing the punt? No, didn't look like to me his left foot was. The right foot came back on that track, and maybe they. It, it looked like uh, it, when it was live speed that he may have stepped out of bounds to me. But they were trying to blow the whistle. No, nope, he's in there. In there. So I think that play is going to stand as called. So they'll have it at the 49, and they'll replay first down, and they'll have to reset the clock to uh, 41 seconds. The the uh, back judge was running up when that play was going. I think he was trying to blow his whistle to get that stopped before they snapped it because obviously you have to get the review in before the next play. And I think there may have been some communication problems between the officials to get it stopped before uh, Oklahoma snapped it. So 41 seconds showing on the clock. And uh, the Huskers continue to lead by seven points. And Oklahoma with uh, still one more chance, one more shot. And I really don't think you want anything in the middle of the field on your side of the first down marker. It's just going to take too long to get your guys back. It's going to burn too much time. So anything you throw that's inside of 10 yards needs to be near the sidelines. Otherwise, it needs to be down the field. Now, that means if you've got those down the field routes, the pass rush for Nebraska comes in. Previous play was under review to see if the kick returner stepped out of bounds. He did not. We were paged prior to the snap. It'll be first down, 41 seconds on the clock. Well, an extra down, and the crowd does not like it. But that, the hurry-up offense, that's what it creates. But also, that's the reason officials have whistles. Yep. Yeah, they should have been blowing them like crazy. I agree. Crowd coming to life. Sue with the hit and the ball almost intercepted. And that was O'Hanlon. O'Hanlon almost came up with another pick. Well, you just can't stand in the pocket. I, you've got to move this pocket some. You cannot block and Dominic and Sue. You bring a back in. You've got to start chipping this guy. He, he's just he's too good to try to block him with one lineman. You've got to get someone to help him. It's time to roll the pocket, and he puts this one airborne, and it is intercepted at the six-yard line, and it is O'Hanlon with his third. Well, O'Hanlon just threw the ball as far as he could in the air, and uh, kind of like the rule against Jake Locker in the Washington play with his exuberance. It's going to cost him an unsportsmanlike. And I think that that is Josh Heupel asking Landry why. After the interception, unsportsmanlike number 33 in Nebraska. A penalty enforced half the distance. First down. Well, I'm not quite sure. Landry Jones is throwing this like it's the last play of the game. He's got three receivers on the top, and they roll it out, finally get away from it. Everybody's running vertical. It's all deep routes. They, they had nobody running a uh, intermediate route. Uh, you had plenty of time. You had time for four or five plays at least. Just not sure why you go for what looked like a Hail Mary throw with 28 seconds left. Well, he'll have to take one knee. He goes forward. That's the last play of the ball game. Oklahoma cannot stop the clock. And the Nebraska Cornhuskers are going to win a ball game that they were underdogs in. But that's happened many times in this series. You see the two very good friends shaking hands and then moving back to be with their teams. And some of these Husker fans looking on in wonderment because there were questions with what happened with the offense at times tonight. But this defense, as we suggested off the top of the telecast, was capable mm. of winning the ball game for it. It all came down to turnovers. All points for Nebraska off of turnovers. 
Once again, our final score is Nebraska 10 and Oklahoma 3. Now for Ed Cunningham, I'm Ron Franklin saying so long from Lincoln, Nebraska. Now let's go to John Saunders in Times Square for the Ford wrap-up.